you guys, let's talk about range again. I got my notes here on my daughter's iPad. Why don't we step into my office? No, I'm really just a Hey guys, Anthony here with We Back Tesla, and We Back Tesla because if Tesla fails, EVs fail, and we can't have that. So please consider subscribing, become a part of the solution, and when you guys make the awesome decision of buying your Tesla, you can use our referral link down below to get a thousand miles of free supercharging. But that's enough of that. Today we're talking about range. So in my previous few range videos I've done, I got some awesome feedback from you guys, and today we're gonna be going over the results I saw when I took this car out on the highway for a long range highway commute. So I wanted to find somewhere that I could do 75 miles per hour or 120 kilometers per hour for a very long distance with very little interruption. So I got some really good data. I've got a table and I've got a graph and things are about to get real. So hopefully this will be a little bit easier to digest and hopefully it helps some of you guys out. So let's start with the fancy table I created. It's gonna be right here, I think. So I started this test at 64 degrees or 18 degrees Celsius and I ended it at 54 degrees in 12 degrees Celsius. So the highway watt hours per mile that I was able to achieve was 249. And when I say highway, I'm talking about the 110 miles that I was able to maintain 75 miles per hour or 120 kilometers per hour. And that translates to 154 watt hours per kilometer. I did document the whole trip while splitting out the specific high speed chunk that I did. So the whole trip, I was able to get 236 watt hours per mile or 147 watt hours per kilometer. So the distance I traveled, like I stated earlier, was 110 miles at 75 miles per hour consistent. The total trip distance ended up being 146 miles. So that's with the extra 18 miles that I had to travel to get to my starting location for the high speed chunk and then to get back home. And on here, I have a max recommendation based off of what I was able to achieve on this specific test in these specific conditions. The max that I would have been comfortable traveling would be about 165 miles or 265 kilometers. So in my notes for a little bit more context on this test, it said these are based on a mild spring evening with no weather. So I completed this test on a loop of highway in order to cancel out the elevation change that I can't avoid here in Colorado. Now let's go over the graph that I created based off these numbers. So in the graph, you can see that I have state of charge up on the Y axis, as well as distance traveled along the X axis. So as you can see from the legend on top, I have three pieces of data. The first one being the full trip in blue, which shows the entire trip going to the starting point for the 75 mile an hour chunk, as well as getting home. The green points represent the purely 75 mile an hour chunk. And the yellow points represent what I would have been comfortable traveling based on the results of this test in these conditions. So I did start at a charge of 90%. So Elon and Tesla recommend 90% maximum charge for a daily commute and only charging above that when you need to go on a long trip. And that should be very infrequently. So that's why I started at 90% because I wanted this to represent someone's daily commute. Now, if you were doing a trip similar to this less frequently, maybe once or twice a month at most, then charging up to 95 or even 100% might be okay in those situations and give you a little bit more buffer than what this test gave me. Now, just to talk specifically about the 110 mile chunk of this trip where I was just strictly doing highway speeds at 75 miles an hour, I drained 54% off of my battery in that distance going 75 miles an hour. And so I could have easily achieved starting at a 90% charge, 164 miles, or 265 kilometers. And that's put my battery close to 10% state of charge at the end of the trip. So between the graph and the table, I hope this was helpful to some of you considering purchasing a Model 3 Standard Range Plus, deciding whether you need to go up to the all-wheel drive longer range vehicles, or if you wanna compare your numbers to mine if you do have a Standard Range Plus. I really hope that these real world tests are helpful to some of you guys. I loved the feedback from my previous range videos, so please leave some comments below Tell me what you think. Give me some more ideas of what you guys want to see. And if you're on the fence about getting a Tesla, I hope that you jump over and join us because it's amazing. These cars are fantastic. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them below. Please subscribe. I'm done rambling. Thank you again. I'll see you guys in the next one.